Hey everybody, Sam Taylor here, Cancer Cure Bus. Episode six, the prognosis. So as you recall, where we left off last time, I was uh, had a meeting scheduled for 10, in, 10 a.m. in the morning, Friday, October 21st, with Dr. Michelle Eisenberg at University of Nebraska Medical Center. My wife, Stephanie, and I went and met with Dr. Eisenberg. So we walked in to her office, and she had my MRI pulled up, so I got to see the MRI for the first time. She showed me where the tumor is, um, she said, no, here's the mass, here's the tumor. She said, it's located in the thalamus area of your brain, near the brain stem. She said, first of all, what this looks like to me, based on all my experience, we hadn't done a biopsy yet, but she says, based on all my experience, um, and obviously she's got a lot of great experience, she said, this looks like a primary tumor, meaning that it started in the brain, it didn't come from another part of the body. And I said, oh, well, that's, that's good news, right? Because, you know, you hear about cancer spreading, and, and she said, well, not necessarily. <laughs> so I'm okay. Um, and she said, based on uh, my experience, what this looks like is what we call a grade four glioblastoma. And I said, hmm. I go, well, grade four, um, how many, you know, that doesn't sound good. How many grades are there? And she goes, there's four. <laughs> I go, okay, that doesn't sound good. And um, she said that uh, this type of tumor um, is a pretty aggressive tumor. So I just said, well, Doctor, you know, based on your experience, what's the prognosis? And she said, well, with this type of tumor, the median life expectancy is 15 months. And I remember my reaction. I went, I went, wait, wait 15 months? Did, did you say months? You said months? I was like, are you kidding me? And I felt like I you know, kicked in the gut when I heard 15 months. And she said, well, that's the median. It could be more, it could be less. I'm like, okay. And first thing I said is like, Dr. Eisenberg, I love Dr. Eisenberg. I said, thank you so much for, you know, not sugarcoating it. I want to, you know, give it to me straight. And she did. And then she said, Sam, I would like to tell you that you'll be here in five years, but I can't. And as I did more research, I understood why. Because when you look at the five-year uh, expectancy, it's like 3%. So... After Dr. Eisenberg told me the 15 months, obviously that was quite a shock. But here's what she said that gave me also comfort. She said, here's what I've done, Sam. I've already sent your scans to uh, two of the top experts in the world. Because based on where your tumor is located, what it looks like to me is the option for surgery is not an option because it's too risky. Um, typically with a, a tumor, you want to cut it out, you know, you cut out as much of the tumor as possible. But based on where it was located uh, near the brain stem, she felt like it was probably too risky. Um, she sent, she goes, I've already sent your scans to two of the top experts in the country. One is at MD Anderson, Dr. Jeffrey Weinberg, who she had trained with, and another was at um, another uh, cancer clinic, another world-renowned. And she said, I've already sent your scans to them, and I've heard back from them, and they agree with me that probably the best approach for your tumor is a technique that we call laser thermal ablation. It's a newer technique. It's been, we've been doing it for you know, 10 years or so. But for tumors that cannot be surgically removed, um, that's the right approach. And so she said that I've already gotten confirmation from them that they agree that it looks like you're a candidate for laser thermal ablation. And she described to me how that works. What they basically do is they insert a channel um, into your brain, into the center of the tumor. They run a laser um, into the center of the tumor and they start zapping the tumor with this thermal laser. They heat the cells up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever, double, the, you know, double what they are, and they, they start killing the tumor from the inside out. And that way they start killing all the tumor cells from the inside out and then they can stop before they damage the healthy brain tissue that's around. So it's, I mean, the, the technology, it's amazing. It's like it's Star Wars, it's amazing. And she said, uh, now the, the bad news is we don't have that technology here at University of Nebraska Medical Center. She says, but they have it at MD Anderson and Cleveland Clinic. That was the other one. She, she'd sent my scan to the Cleveland Clinic, which is another world-class operation, they, they, and they do the procedure there. And I said to her, I said, okay, if we're up to you, where would you go? And she said, well, they're both top-notch, and these are both the two best in the world. She said, but I trained at MD Anderson. I know the kind of care you'll get there. And I said, well, I actually have family. My brother lives in Houston. Um, 
I have connections in Houston. And, and like I said from the beginning, MD Anderson is the one that came to my mind. So I said, I'm, I'm leaning towards MD Anderson. And since so you train there and, and you know those people, let's do that. And so that was a decision. Why? And that's why I'm here down at MD Anderson. Um, again, one of those little tender mercies, never had a, a doubt, never had to get a second opinion. It was just very clear, had a confirmation, felt good about it, peace and calm. This is the way to go. And so, again, that blessing, you know, these little miracles, and to so quickly fall into place, boom, 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 to get the diagnosis, to get lined up, um, and then to get the, the surgery schedule, which is coming up on future episodes, but just how quickly I was able to be treated. I mean, you, you can see the miracles just kind of starting to stack up. So that was a blessing um, for me. Again, just confirmation that I know I knew I was going to get the best care possible. It was all falling into place. And that uh, I just was at peace with these decisions that were being made. So that for me uh, was huge. And for my wife as well. She felt, Stephanie felt comfortable as well. We knew that that was the right approach to go with this laser ablation um, procedure. And I said, I, hey, I understand, Dr. Eisenberg, I understand that. Um, but I need to ask you a couple questions. I said, are you a person of faith? And she laughed. She said, well, I am a person of faith, but I'm not of your faith. I'm Jewish. I said, it doesn't matter. This isn't about one faith versus another faith. I just want to know, are you a person of faith? I said to her, I said, do you believe in God? And she said, yes. I go, good, I do too. I go, do you believe that God knows you and loves you? She said, yes. I go, great, I do too. I said, do you believe that God answers your prayers through the Spirit or through some means? And she said, yes. I said, I do too. And I said, do you believe that, gra that God, through faith, can grant miracles? And she said, yes. I said, I do as well. Those, those common principles, if you think about, they apply to almost every faith in the world. You know, belief in some higher power, whatever you call it. I'm, I'm going to say God, just because it's kind of universal. So that's why I use God. So some higher power. Does that higher power know us as individuals and care about us, love us, want, wants us to be happy? Yes. Does that higher, higher power communicate with us somehow, answering our prayers through whatever means? We'll call it the spirit, just, you know, the spirit. So, um, and does this higher power through our faith, grant miracles. Um, and I think, I know I've seen many miracles in my life, and I've already seen many miracles in this journey. So if you take those principles, they apply to almost every faith in the world. And that's what I'm talking about. And so I said, yes, you are a person of faith. I am as well. I said, that's important because I know that whatever I have is going to take faith for me to be healed from this, along with positivity and modern medicine and, and everything else. But I know that faith is going to be a big part of this, especially when you tell me 15 months. Because I said to her, I said, Dr. Eisenberg, I need more time. 15 months, that's not going to cut it. You know, my daughters, I have a daughter who's a sophomore in college. I have a daughter who's a high school senior. I have a daughter who's an eighth grader. I said, I want to see my daughters grow up. I want to see them get married. I want to see them have families. I want to see grandkids. Uh, 15 months. You know, and what I said to her, I said, I said, you know, I understand you're giving me the statistics, and, you, and that's what you have to do. Is here's all the statistics of everybody that has a grade four GBM. That's what it's called. So, um, grade four glioblastoma GBM is the acronym for glioblastoma. Um, and if you look at all the statistics, the median is 15 months. I get that, but I said, but throw that. That's all. Throw it out the window. That's a moot point. So what I want to know is what are the statistics for somebody who's been given a blessing and in that blessing they were promised that they, through their faith they would see miracles. Give me those statistics. Well, you don't have those statistics. And so that's what really matters to me. And so I understand the medical statistics. Um, but that doesn't really apply because faith and miracles is going to be a part of this story, and you're going to see that as, this, as my journey unfolds. And that's my message for everyone. It's a message of hope, a message of faith, a message of miracles. Um, and never, never, never give up. And so for the cancer warriors out there, keep your faith. Stay strong. 
you will find peace. May God bless you, and may God bless your families. Thanks.